Let's first take a look at the workflow that you go through when you're creating software and using Git. So if this is you here on my screen, the first thing that you generally do is write some code and that gets staged and tracked by Git. Then you make a commit and that goes into your local stash. When you make that commit, before it happens, you can trigger a Git hook and you can get it to automatically run some scripts and you can get it to block that commit if it fails conditions that you set. You're then gonna push a series of commits to your remote repository. Before that push leaves your computer, you can trigger another hook, a pre-push hook, and you can prevent them from leaving and entering your remote repository if that hook fails. And of course, then we have server side. So the first two are on your local environment. And these are great. You have a lot of control around these. And then you also have hooks that you can put on your server side, right? Where your Git server sits. And for instance, pre-receive. So before it gets into your repository, but after it's left your computer, you can run something. When we talk about Git hooks, three come up the most often. Pre-commit, pre-push, pre-receive. If you know how to use Git, you probably know exactly what all of these already do. There's actually a whole bunch more, and there's more than even what I have on the screen right now. What you need to know is that the Git hooks all work in exactly the same way. So after today, you're gonna understand really how they work, and you're gonna be able to write your own ones, and it doesn't matter what hooks you're going to be using. Now there's one more thing I wanna talk about, and that is understanding the difference between a local and a global hook, right? Probably pretty self-explanatory. A local hook, sits inside your repository. I'll show you exactly where it is in a minute. And this runs just on this repository, just this project, right? Nothing else is concerned. You can set up a global hook. And this means that it's gonna run on all of your repositories. So just keep that in mind. And of course, there's lots of different ways to be able to do this. And I'm gonna run you through the one that I prefer. Okay. So we're all caught up on what Git hooks are, what they do. Let's create our first Git hook. So I've got my IDE open here. I'm using Visual Studio. Whatever IDE you use, that's fine. Everything's gonna work in the same way. I'm navigated right now into an empty project, an empty directory called Git hooks. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna initialize Git with Git init, obviously. And what does this do? This creates a folder. It creates a dot Git directory, a dot Git folder. On my navigator, you can see this a little bit more clearly. So this is the folder we have here. If you can't see it, it just means that you have hidden files not showing. So just make sure that you turn your hidden files on. If we navigate into this folder, we'll see some things here. We won't worry about a lot of them, but we will look in this folder here that says hooks. And in here, you'll see we have a lot of hooks that are named that are called dot sample. I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm gonna navigate into using my IDE now. So these are all the hooks that come standard out the box every time you initialize Git. So if you have old Git directories, so long as you haven't messed around with the template settings, these will all be in those folders. So we have here the pre-commit, the pre-merge, pre-apply patch, so on and so forth. To create our first Git hook, it's actually ridiculously easy. All that we need to do is take one of these hooks, go to rename and remove dot sample. That's it. Every time Git performs an action, it looks inside this hooks folder and see if there is an applicable hook that is valid. If it is, it will run that, the script that you write will be executed. We don't need to update any configurations. That will happen at the box. Inside this pre-commit folder, we can see some code. Now this is written in bash, as you can see by the first line here, right? SH. You can write your Git hooks in any scripting language. So you can use Python, you can use Perl, in this video, I'm gonna be using Bash. One of the things that this cook is doing out the box is it's checking for trailing white space error. And this is what this very last one is here. All right, I'm gonna open up my main.py file and all I'm gonna do is add some errors by putting in a bunch of white spaces. So if we save this and we try and commit this file, we should be blocked by the 
pre-commit git hook. And we are. You'll see here that we it's given us a trailing white spaces error and it's actually exited from that hook. So if we go git status, we'll see that there are no commits yet. This has been blocked. Now this is really helpful when we're writing git hooks, knowing that we can actually exit out of it and prevent the action, right? We can write git hooks that just allow it through. It doesn't always have to exit. We have to write that in, but it's helpful to know that that is happening because we don't need to do anything about our git history. We don't need to rebase or uh, use a soft head. We can just continue on as normal and remove these trailing white spaces, which if I do that and I do the exact same thing, we'll see that we've still gone through uh, no troubles at all.